All right. Well, I am live. I see that there's already a couple people in here waiting. You guys are the uh, early bird champions. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty excited for what's to come. I'm just going to wait for some people to some more people to show up so that we're not like uh, starting a little too early. So we'll give it a, a little bit. So everybody just let me know how y'all are doing today while I uh, set things up on the back end here. We got this shared in the old Discord. fix that what's up Rosalyn Rosalyn how you doing just waiting for uh, it to fill up a little bit because sometimes YouTube takes a few minutes or so to actually send out the notifications which can be kind of annoying but it is what it is yo what's up Bayo you are early indeed maybe just clear off my desk What's up, little little big bagel? What's going on? Nice to see you. I'm, I'm happy that we're uh, hanging out and checking out some cassette beasts today. I've been dying for some cassette beasts, man. This 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 this, this game. I'm telling you, this is gonna be one of my games. All right. How you doing? Uh, um, uh, I sorry, sorry if I mispronounce this. Uh, Emmerhan. How you doing? Uh, Sh uh Chan Moy. Uh, how you doing? A uh, man of games. How's it going? Uh, didn't expect news of cassette beast. Yeah, they they did a forty five minute stream over on Discord, and now it's up on YouTube. Uh, it, it's only got eleven hundred views right now, so not a lot of people have seen it. So I figured I'd bring it to your guys' attention. We'd sort of react to it, and uh, yeah, this is basically like the intro of the game, pretty much, uh, leading up to like the first city, and there's some battles, and, and it, it's it's really cool. What's up, Rescue Squad? How you doing? I'm pretty excited, uh, to say the least, because I haven't checked out the whole thing just yet. Uh, I do gotta switch that there. Uh, we're gonna do a little audio test, so so uh, let me know, let me uh, know you guys if this is too loud. Maybe we wait for there to be some talking. Any suggestions in the name? Yeah, let me know if you guys can hear the uh, other uh, uh, the devs talking. It might be a little loud. Is that volume better? Yeah, let me know if that's too loud or not. And now uh, we'll go to the back. That's just how it is with streams, man. You never know. Hey, what's going on, uh, Og Taz? Uh, 1986, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Mini Has, what's going on? Oni Boy, how you doing? Omar, what's up? What's up, my fellow Chad? You can hear it? Okay, that's good. It's not It's not too much too loud compared to me. Hey, what's up, Jesse? How you doing? Just Taz, make it easier. Got you. <laughs> All right, you, you know what? We got we got around uh, what twenty people in here. Let's uh, let's just start, and uh, when people come flooding in, they come flooding in. So basically, we're just gonna hang out, go through this whole thing, and just chit chat while we go. Nice casual stream. I start us off then? Yeah. Shall we introduce ourselves? Yeah. Uh, you want to start? <laughs> All right. I'm Tom. I do the coding and design the cassette pieces. Tom's pretty and thick. I'm Jay. I do the art and the writing. Jay's pretty um, thick too. Yeah. This is the first time we've kind of like had a proper, like, extended look at the gameplay. We're just going to stream maybe like the kind of like the opening. Me too. Me too. I'm super hyped enough, for this game. Of, give us a chance to kind of show the game in progress and working and take uh, some Q&A questions. Yeah, there's some, and... like, th there's bonding aspects to the game, uh, Jesse, if you want to, like, build up. I don't know how far it goes into, I, I don't know if it goes up to, like, romance or how that works, but yeah, they do have, like, a bond mechanic so your fusions can get stronger. Now rides this night through the realm into the wilderness of Wirral. 
few thereabouts that either God or other with good heart loved. Sir Gawain uh, and the Green Knight, unknown author, 14th century. And I get to chat to you guys in the community about the game. Trippy. So you get to design your character, character for this stream. if you didn't know. Any suggestions in the name from anyone? They should have named it Jim Leader Ed. Is that volume better, Pete? So a bit like Persona. I actually haven't played it's through okay. any of the so uh, Persona games, to be honest. Persona. <laughs> <laughs> Got the, uh... Traffic rather... Got, like uh... <laughs> got, like got a bit of insider Sorry. info. Oh, okay. We could go for, like, a big beard. Yeah. They got a lot of customization options. Say bold. We could go for bold. We could go for bold. We could show off some of the lovely hair. Uh, so many options here. <laughs> there are some really good options. <laughs> oh no, I, I I think that's what Little Bagel was saying. Is there a demo available? Not yet. I, I'm really excited for when this game does come out, though. If we do get a demo before launch, you know I'll be jumping on that real quick. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, let's go with the wallet. Yeah. <laughs> Mullet. Option is just the very start, just so you're not playing around yeah, too long. Falling through the uh, the void here. Changes pretty quickly. Harbor Town yeah. Beach. <laughs> the game looks so nice. <laughs> I love the 2.5D. context or anything. There is a chest to open. You get wood right at the start. Well, I mean, you aren't a sleeping gown, so morning wood is par for the course. So yeah, this just gives you a bit of a uh, chance to play around. Oh, you guys the, uh, can hear that in the background? Yeah, my, my daughter's morning. complaining. She's eating lunch right now. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't make any sudden move. Track the crabs don't like strangers. They were jumping right into things already. What's up, Dolly? Checking out some cassette beasts right now. Okay. Now this is a big choice. Start. Are we going to go with spooky or sweet? Based on the names. We're going to leave this one up to the You can jump yeah. Pokemon Punch and learn this. So you can choose between spooky and sweet, which is interesting. We'll show you another time. <laughs> This is a high stakes choice. We've got some spooky and we've got some sweet. I feel like spooky's winning out here. Spooky's really good though. <laughs> Insider info, the orange I feel like lady spooky is the is bachelor. The <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yo, it's Ed again with the exclusive. No, this isn't exclusive. Like, the, you, this is online. Uh, like, you could... You know what? I, I don't remember if I did. I should I, yeah, I should have so this uh, posted starters, this in the description. Um, you have two options at the start. You can find this on YouTube. I like that we don't quite, like, show you what uh, the If you want to check it out and, later for whatever reason, and, uh, I will link it here. Theory. It gives you the uh, information, bio, uh, encounter rate there. information. I just linked it in the description. Yo, you gotta stop ratting me out. <laughs> That's Kaylee transforming into a sirenade, which is her uh, kind of signature tape that she uses. So she used to be the cat with the TV yeah, on her head, so, so, so they changed her. If you watch the original trailer. Traffic so Crabbo. Banshee's starting moves. Got basic smack. So I don't know if they mentioned this, but they did talk about this in a previous post. 
as you can see, there's like these little bars, right? Those load up as the battle goes on. So the law, so if you decide to like use smaller attacks, uh, and you can lead up to a big one. It's like reverse stamina. So instead of starting full and losing it, you actually build up as you as the turns go on. The yeah. cat TV. I'm we've, sure she's still in the game. Kind of, I like, started you off with like very simple. You know, it's it's not too complicated. You can just press your only attack and you do it. And you get a slightly different set for a uh, Kaylee there. Maybe it's different if you chose sweet. That's possible. Traffic caught, crab got slapped. So Saint Shine. I quite like. Do we know how many starters there will be? Um, so yeah, um, good question. There are two. There's two starters. Yeah. And they have uh, but, um, branched evolutions. Yeah. Yeah, so branch evolutions starters, a thing doesn't in mean this game that there's too. two right. final evolutions. Uh, not to, you know, give away too much. I'm Kaylee. I think I talked about this on uh, oh, yeah, in a video a while back on their website. They have the information year, about that. There's branched evolution in the uh, game. Talked about much, but um, <clears throat> kind of like Kindred. That's been really cool to kind of get in the game and flesh out the characters a lot more. Traffic Crab has two evolutions. This point. So there's some characters that are voiced at this point. On a on our most recent build, and some that are not. Makes a big difference to the game, though. Yeah. <laughs> Your new home. <laughs> I don't know how best to break the news. Kind of goes for what we call like limited voice acting. We all are. Where they they have like a lot of inflections <clears throat> and a couple of line reads, but um, it doesn't kind of cover all the text in the game. So what's kind of interesting about this uh, th th this game is so every single person in the world is just stuck on this island and they don't know why. So I think that's a really cool con uh, concept. So you've uh, fainted at this point? Happened to have a spare home, I see. I should have. Not to info dump you, but we're on an island called New World. It's not strictly on Earth. At least that's what we think. Castaway has always been trying to get to the world for a century and none have succeeded. <laughs> but you'll be okay. There's a community in Harbor Town. We help each other out. It's not a bad life. A and it's safe. Well, apart from the monsters. Yeah. <laughs> is this game good slash out? I think it looks good. Uh, it's not out, so I can't say if it actually is. But like from what I've seen, it looks like it's shaping up to be a sexy game. We don't have release date yet. Um, yeah, there we go. That's uh, kind of sets you off. So the player is uh, marooned on this world. And there's a, it's kind of like a little early kind of twist that rather than you're just kind of magic to this fancy land, you're one of many people who are equally as marooned on this island. Yeah, I think that's a cool concept. Yep, don't go out without your clothes off. It's like Link's <laughs> Awakening if everybody was point. cast away yeah. there. <clears throat> Nine out of ten yeah, now, now on this IGN. Kind of, uh, gives you the full breadth Not of the out yet. Uh, creator. I've been hooked on Monster Extreme. I was looking for yeah. similar games because it seems like I'm near the end. Because that piece, uh, th I, I think it's going to have we more like kind of non-Pokemon-like uh, uh, aspects cool to it look than uh, like Nexamon, Coromon. So I think this might be a good game for you to get into when it does come out. How many monsters? I, it's Lennon over a hundred, uh, but yeah, the I'm fusions put it to like thirteen thousand because they're they're um, like. Someone's asking about their singing. They're uh, like. Um, yeah, we have the same vocalist uh, Shelby, who's. Um, sorry, I'm just letting him vocals talk. on a bunch of songs in the game. The fusions are like uh, generated by an algorithm, so there's like there's like tons of combinations. Which is really cool. Yeah, the pink trousers and feeling, they're very salmon pink. The devs are building themselves. Yeah, looks cool. uh, devs are hipsters confirmed. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's nuts. Like, they have a fusion simulator on their website. I believe it's just cassettebeast.com. And I get to check out the uh, town. I so, think the um, fusions, the, well, the of, fusions aren't permanent in this game. They're kind of like Mega Evolution in a way. Like you fuse during battle and then you unfuse after the battle. All battles take place in doubles. So when you fuse, you become a single dual typed monster. 
and you get the benefits of the fusion, but then like, like, so fusion's not always going to be something that's necessarily an objectively good thing to do. It's not like you fuse and nuke because once you fuse, now you're one monster. So you're up against, you're up against two. So yeah, you'll get stronger, but you also have that sort of nerf. So fusion actually has benefits and pause uh, benefits and um, detriments. And you'll sort of have to navigate the game um, and, and different battles based on, on like what's good for the time it's not like how mega evolution like yeah you know our dynamax like yeah you could strategically use them but like there's not really a downside to using them whereas like besides opportunity cost whereas in this there could be downsides b based on when you use them along with like a few of the features in the game where we kind of limit yeah it, it does sound really cool i'm gonna go check um, it out later uh care to post a link you don't have oh to um concept.com i gotta so find it overwhelmed um, you yeah, just kind of get this little section where you can get to. But um, as you go through the game, I think it's just cassette you get access to like other yeah, parts of the is. town. This live stream will stay up after. I, I usually just leave all my live streams up. There you go. And you you just go to Fusion, and there's like a Fusion simulator there. They have like eight monsters that you can choose to fuse, and, and like all the fusions are are like built with like different parts. It's, it, it's pretty cool. <clears throat> um, it's empty yeah. at the start, but as you make more friends, it fills out a bit. Oh, Clements yeah, is hitting kind of like us. a little uh, hub <laughs> for you to uh, catch up at. And this is Clements who runs it. Another cool thing that Cassepis has is this like giant underground system. Like, it has, like, like think of, like, Diamond and Pearl Underground, but there's, like, quests and stuff down there from what I've heard. So, like, like they have an entire, like, underground area, too, where there's, like, harder bosses and, and optional stuff. Yeah, 1998. So some, uh, <laughs> the game's coming out in 1998. Yeah, we don't have a date yet. Uh, there are more options. I think I made a video called, like, Don't Sleep on Cassette yeah, Beasts, yeah. Bale. <laughs> Not um, allowed. asking about the uh, green bars. Yeah, this gives you the um, just on the mini map as well. It's attached to the mini map is the um, and it gives you the health of your current active uh, capes for you and your partner. Although at this point you don't actually have a partner. Uh, someone's asking, did you just hear Lennon music? Correct. The uh, merchant music uh, makes a reappearance from Lennon's Inception. That's uh, a keen eye might have noticed. Lena Inception is the Zelda like game that they made, if you didn't know. Um, again, because Joel worked on the soundtrack to both this and Lena, there's uh, some recurring elements in that sense. There's normally a, a market in this location. Uh, they don't mm -hmm. set up until a bit later on in the game. Yeah. Oh, I, I need to play this game, man. <laughs> like, oh, by the way, it's coming out to all major platforms and. Uh, Xbox Game Pass as well. Bridge is another thing that uh, you... So it's supposed to come out, out on Switch. Uh, I think it's PS4 and yeah. Xbox oh, yeah, One. The, um, I don't think it's series and PS5, but it could be wrong. There's like a day-night cycle in the game. It's kind of like, it's active and dynamic, so... No, 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 this, this is a video like we're the, reacting kind of to. Direction it. of the shadows change to kind of show the time of day. Hello, no, we're just Steve. reacting to it. So first 45 yeah, minutes of the, the uh, game. town hall. This kind of acts like a... Uh, it's... It's kind of like a like the rangers in the game who kind of act as the um, I guess kind of how do you describe the rangers, Tom? It's a fairy tale guild. <laughs> They're a community volunteer group. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this kind of acts like a hub for them. So you uh, resources related to them, uh, you can get here. Um, you as you go through the game, you get to kind of like uh, work with them, and join up. So there's not a huge amount you can do right at this point, but. Um, yeah, you can always look around. Is there something in the fridge there, do you think? I'm going to check this first. Ah, I got some tapes. So the tapes yeah, let you, like, balcony, copy uh, monsters, I believe. Because you don't actually catch well. them, you copy them, and then you can transform yeah, into something them. something in the fridge. <laughs> There's a vending machine, though. <laughs> And then the stickers, like, there's so much to this game. Like, it's also I think the stickers well. let you like change your moves and stuff like that. So much cool stuff. Like, like this it's game's completely uh, unique. When we're planning to upload the video, um, we'll probably do it as soon as we can. Yeah. yeah. Um, it'll go up within a few hours. 
Yeah. yeah. It just looks so good, man. Like the 2.5D. Oh, and I guess the last thing we haven't shown off is a little the uh, elevator there that is currently non-functional. Sorry, bud. <laughs> now we gotta we gotta yeah, pressure them to put a gym leader at NPC in the game. I have to yeah. be in every single game. I'll be like the Mike Tyson of video games. Find Kaylee now. Held your own, you one shot at him. Um, someone was asking how long, how uh, far along we are with game development. Um, oh, I want to hear this. It's a tricky question to ask. Um, I think it's is... going really well. Um, we've got some like a lot of stuff to do. Um, we can't talk about release dates, and it's not something we're gonna kind of talk about until we kind of really know. But um, I can say that development's going very well. And um, yeah, maybe better than we thought at first. Um, uh... There's been a lot to do, but we've gotten better <laughs> at doing it over time. Yeah, so I, I popped into the stream on Discord at one point. So I, I think this is near where I popped in. Oh, and Kaylee's about to give you some more tutorials. Def on the wish list? Hell yeah. I'm going to get it on Steam and Switch, just saying. <laughs> I'm going to get it on both. I don't even know if cloud saves are a thing. Uh, that would have been a good question to ask, actually. Even the UI is like really cool. How they decided to actually Spring use Hill, a cassette, which is one of the, uh, uh, a cassette thing. And the earliest monsters we showed off. A Walkman. I think that's what they're called. Because the disc one's a discman, I think. I had the one with the disc growing up. I think, but we called it a Walkman, but I'm pretty sure that was wrong. Like, I'm pretty what? sure that's a Discman. Like, the disc one with the with the headphones? Because I'm an old man. But, but yeah, the one with the cassette, I think it's called a Walkman. Spring Heel is named after Spring Heel Jack. Get which it is on the Luna? Like a, uh, Victorian England folklore figure. As, it was a strange man who can jump very far. A lot of monsters in the game... Um, burning sulfur into people's faces. Oh, is that one of his things? That's pretty cool. <laughs> a lot of the monsters in the game, um, I think we've talked about this a bit on the uh, Discord. Um, we try to avoid, as a rule, we try to avoid, I guess what I call like elemental animal as just the basis for monsters. We do a lot of leaning into um, kind of folklore, cryptids, kind of uh, like objects and things. Um, yeah, their design philosophy for this type of game is perfect in my opinion because they take a lot of like plasticky elements, like for example, having a crab with a traffic cone, or like, like, like the monsters almost look like, like they fit that sort of, cause it's hard to explain, like they fit that sort of like weird, just like alien, almost like, like plastic, like, 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 like these things wouldn't, you wouldn't even imagine these things existing in the real world. And I think they did a really good job with that, that goal sort of with the, uh, their type chart which i don't know if they talk about here but they have a lot of like interesting types like plastic type for example like glitter type um and i i think like the way they go about this is like like the monster designs are really indicative of like that uniqueness that comes with the game like if anybody tries to say this game is even like like this, i wouldn't even consider this game a pokemon like like this is it, it, you have like you, you don't even catch the monsters but you you have monsters that battle that's it like it's it's not even like a Pokemon like like Nexomon or Coromon like this is far more um and, and again this, this isn't like a bash to those games but this is just more unique this is more like of its own thing I'm trying to give the kind of monsters <coughs> like Monster Sanctuary kind of like board, Monster Sanctuary is its own thing and have monsters that feel um kind of different to maybe what you're expecting or what you may be seeing in other games I like how the camera moves like that uh, you'll see here that the camera swings around. Obviously, there's like a fixed <laughs> camera perspective. I'm with Lock Kaylee. As someone so who's dabbled in, perspective in code, in game, I can appreciate stuff like that. We, uh, <laughs> like random stuff like that. <laughs> move it around so you can see things. And this is, yeah, this is Sirenade. Um, yeah, Sirenade's an air type. And uses oh, I just noticed... Kind of like a, New power world footage is out. Kind of like sound or are you talking about my video? Well. Uh, I, I basically, that video is just announcing that it's favorites. coming and when it's coming. <laughs> Uh, May 22nd. Is now a good time to Unless there's new, new Power World footage. Check out the stickers, do you think? Yeah, totally. That's a good call. Ooh, 
Oh, yeah, we've got a tutorial box here. No, I don't think there's anything. So in I here. guess um, like stickers no, essentially of your what we like like moves in the game. Um, Which monster is my favorite? What makes them interesting is that like <laughs> that's hard. Than, like, I like the traffic crab a, move, a lot. <laughs> um, kind of on one of your monster. Forms, I'd have to look at a list of them in, if, if I were to and, decide. Like hardwired into them, they're kind of removable. It's almost like equipment slots. Each one is kind of like a piece of equipment that can be like um, attached and like uh, moved around. And not all of them, as well yeah, as you'll have stickers, seen, yeah. are like active moves that you trigger manually. Some of them are passive. Get, um, there's passive moves as well, which kind of like have their own trigger conditions. Um, kind of like SMT, actually. Some of them get kind of strange or like have very specific circumstances. Some of your moves um, in SMT aren't necessarily as well as that, active. These sticker moves. Um, can also have rarity um you might see uh some of those it might not depending in the stream but um you can get like rare variants of moves that oh, have she extra she's already gliding she's hacking to them. um someone's asking if all the companions have set beasts so every companion that you get um has kind of like their signature monster um that they start with like sirenade but um you can like you can take it off them or you can swap them out for another monster you think might work better with them but they're not set to, they're not forced to use that monster the whole time. You do get them um, using the monster though. Yeah, yeah, they're very, like the monsters you get with them are like tend to be good anyway. Um, so like if you're like unsure, you can just stick with that monster. But if you want to play around. Here, um, I just saw something interesting. But anyway. Okay, so this is the action points. Remember I was talking about the stamina system, it's different. So each party member gets two AP at the start of each turn and one extra if they land a type advantage and attack. They can plan ahead and save up AP for your most powerful attack by using lower AP moves. So instead of starting with max stamina and just being able to use your strongest attack off the bat, you, you got to build up to it. And using type advantages gives you an advantage. But the thing about type advantages is type advantages and cassette beasts are very different because using a water type attack on a fire type doesn't actually do more damage like per se, but it gives them a debuff. Uh, I forget what the debuff is uh, for fire to water, but um, so, so you get it. So the opponent gets a debuff if they're a fire type hit with a water attack. If you are a water type and you're hit with a fire attack, I believe the debuff was that it creates steam and the steam passively heals you. So you get a buff in that case when you resist. And then some types, and this couldn't, th this could be considered a buff or a debuff depending on how you look at it because the game's in doubles. Some types have transmutation. So using, uh, for example, I think there's a, I want to say you can use like a uh, fire on glass or something and it creates like a transmutation and you change types. So you might want to use that to your own advantage, like use a really weak like attack on, oh, no, I, I, I think if you use fire on glass, it becomes poison or something. So, so like you might want to use that on your, um, on your own monster with a really weak attack to get a certain advantage, or you might want to use that on an enemy's monster, knowing the transmutation in order to like get an adv advantageous attack with your second attacker. There's a lot of like interesting strategies that come alongside with this. Like, I don't know if cassette piece is going to have online, but if they do, I think the competitive scene would be like insane. Um, so like, it's yeah, I'm just reacting to the video. Yeah, it's plastic. Sorry, yeah, fire on plastic. Uh, AP scalings. I'm not sure. You're gonna have to wait. Sorry, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, uh, wait. Are you reacting to the video? Yeah, yeah, we're just reacting to it. If you're like unsure, you can just stick with that monster. But if you want to play around, um, you can do, yeah. That's basically what this stream is. Like, I was gonna make an individual video just going over the highlights, but I, I watched through some of it. And I was like, you know what? Like, no, we, we need to do a full video because there's a lot of interesting information in here. So I was like, why not just stream instead of having an hour and a half long video of just me talking to myself? It's more fun. We can hang out. So that tutorial that I was just talking about AP. Mm-hmm. You get yeah. two AP Is it each worth turn. Yeah. Um, so we've only got two at the moment. We can't use this move. Mm -hmm. um, it works sort of like stamina, but instead of counting down, it counts up as the battle goes on. Mm -hmm. it's kind of a way to have it so you have you can like equip your monster with like really powerful moves but then the game doesn't just become about using your strongest move straight away like you can't do that so you don't have Carter to make some Viper, tactical actually. decisions really to cool. you you know use some weaker moves like smack and spit and build up your ap so you can use that move like battering ram so now uh, which is what for ap i can actually use this battering ram see that's also good mm -hmm. because it makes those weak moves actually usable like you would never keep scratch yeah, on a pokemon 
<laughs> but you might keep spit on yeah, something. Much stronger in this move. Game. It's quite cool. It gives the battles a bit of a rhythm. Yeah, there's kind of like a sense of like, do you? Because you can use like there's some moves that have like lower amounts that you need. Um, some that have like insanely high AP costs, and certain monsters can't even use them. Um, there's a lot Agreed. of different this ways to approach like a how laid you back dive. handle there you battles go. as a consequence. <clears throat> Oh, hey, I didn't know we were playing Dark Souls. Anytime there's a campfire, it's automatically Dark Souls. Um, this was asking if we're showing off the capturing system. No, but you'll, if you stay tuned, you'll be seeing it very shortly. Wait, oh, 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 oh yes. wait, wait. They're talking about the real world. Okay, this is interesting. I used to go camping a lot when I was a kid. Ireland has a bunch of great places to camp out. So um, let's talk about the uh, camping now we're here. Um, My dad would drive the two of us to the countryside and we'd stargaze together. So yeah, you can like rest at these camping sites. Camp okay, so that's really cool for the lore. So they're actually like from real world Earth. Like they're not like I I know they mentioned that this is a different place, but like th yeah, they're legit from like actual real world Earth. That's interesting. Camping sites and um, kind of like heal your monsters and your tapes, and it also passes time, and also you kind of like build a friendship with your uh, partner, and it kind of like they'll have conversations sometimes where they'll kind of talk about their past or their personality, and those conversations change. Um, as you get closer, is she with them, real? Have more things to I say guess. or certain conversations you won't be able <laughs> There'll to. There'll be more monsters about at a certain level with them. them. Okay. Oh, I wonder. Yeah, actually, I'm kind of wondering: is there ones, trainer battles in this game? Which don't have a sprite yet, but they will. Um, I'm kind of curious though, because if everything does take place on this island, if they were to make a cassette beast two or an expansion pass. Would they? Would that game also take place on this island, or would they like have another island that's like also part of this like weird world or whatever? Kind of interesting. I know obviously the first game's not out yet, but I always like to like think about like the long term when I think about stuff like this. I don't know what the devs' plans are because the first game they made was more like like Zelda. This game they're making now is a monster taming game. I don't know what their plan is for like their next uh, endeavor, but like I'm always happy to see devs in the monster taming genre. So death uh someone's asking they when they break essentially you have to go back to a um camp like a campsite or a rest of the cafe and then they all your monsters are fully healed but um, once they're broken you need to rest in order to do that someone's asking do different monsters spawn depending on the time of day yep day night cycles are always cool oh you can't reach that moth although there is a chest over here Ah, you got glass camouflage. Uncommon. Yeah, that's an uncommon one. So mm -hmm. I wonder if so the that green texture is plus respawn. one duration. That's like an extra modifier that you can get. That essentially, um, you know, since, in this since case, there's it like different gives you plus one duration right? to the glass camouflage status effect. Glass camouflage normally only lasts three turns. But Push them off the bridge. <laughs> Based on a true story. Just <laughs> <Yeah. clears> a <throat> guy hanging out in a ditch. Yeah, respool kind of acts like a uh, tape revive. Um, someone's asking um, how big are the areas, and they also know if a Nuzlocke-like challenge would be doable. Um, I think the the philosophy with the game design is dense over big. Um, if, if you, I suppose we can. We've got the uh, world map you can open. So this is the amount of the world that we've explored so far, and um, there's like a lot of stuff. Like in, there's no like there's no like um kind of big open plains, nothing in them. We've tried to make every like kind of a uh, quadrant of the map have something interesting or something relevant to see. I'm glad to see that. I'm um, tired of games just having big empty open worlds and calling themselves yeah. massive switch, experiences. Like, if like your game's life. nothing but a field with like two enemies in it, it's not like there's no point. You're just wasting my time. <laughs> So think about the monsters in New World. When weakened, their essence can be, well, recorded onto the cassette tapes. We don't entirely know how it works, but it does, and that's good enough for us. What if all the cassette beasts are just monsters that used to be people that got stuck? Getting in a conspiracy mode right now. Okay, so we got 42%. Oh, is that how that works? Okay.
And there you go, that's uh, the uh, capture process. So quite a lot actually happened though in the <laughs> space of time. Uh, when you yeah. start recording, you spend your whole turn recording. Um, if you take any damage in that, it counts against your character's health bar. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. The more damage you do while you're recording something, um, the higher your chances of recording successfully. It's almost like I guess we talked about uh, earlier in terms of battle being about kind of like a bit like trying to keep it tactical and kind of building up to big moves. I think that kind of works here, where oh, okay, it's see. more about trying to deal with as much damage and protecting yourself in one turn as much as possible, to kind of maximize your chances. And the percentage that shows up is the is the, uh, the very numerical like likelihood of success. So we give mm. you a very clear indication of how successful your recording might be. Is he illegally pirating the roach and piece? Then, yes, you can switch, and now you've got your own uh, <laughs> domino. Form. The ring, the game. <laughs> that's true. Raffle. Well, that's why we got to get it a billion sales. Now, someone know? asked what recycling does. Yeah, it just um, <laughs> recycles. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So monster forms give us extra abilities when we record them. Don't panic. And that's you unlocking the uh, glide ability. So that's uh. And so now you have like platforming elements in the yeah. game. Another thing that I like. It gives you back some of the basic items. Um, yeah. There isn't really a currency in New Will. They just trade all these recycled resources. Yeah. So you can kind of, if you don't want those items, you can just kind of uh. And then for something else, essentially. Overworld encounters are definitely another nice thing so that I, I like think, to see. Uh, Pi is asking, are there differences between monsters of the same type? I think they mean uh, the same species. Yeah. Uh, the main difference is going to be... <laughs> she fell. Uh, the stickers you've got to apply to them. Mm -hmm. uh, our philosophy is that... It should be. Um, oh, that's cool. She gets herself when you've up. You've got an idea for like a cool team or a cool set of moves that give you a, an interesting strategy. It should be very easy to implement that right away and then start taking advantage of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so things like IVs and EVs kind of get in the way of that, and it's yeah. all about finding the stickers to configure and customize your monster. Yeah, I so there's see, um, there. actual monster a customization a instead of just putting IVs and EVs. Because, like, realistically, IVs and EVs don't give you that much cust customization, especially during a playthrough. Like, all it is is grindy, whereas in this, you just take your stickers and you just place them. So I definitely like that. Oh. Again, like it's Monster right. Sanctuary, you can customize the items that you give them and, and which moves they learn and stuff like that. Uh, we could go for it. Yeah. They're pretty oh, rare. I love this thing. Palm bomb oh, is palm amazing. Bomb. It's a fire type. And someone's asking, uh, do we envision Cassette Beast as a strictly single player game? Um, at this point, we are focusing on it. Um, where things go beyond that, that kind of depends on the reception and how things go. But um, we're kind of focusing on, on having as strong a kind of like a single player experience as possible for now. Ooh. Um, there is local co-op. Um, we couldn't set oh, it up burn. for this stream, but uh, maybe we'll show that off in future. Oh, there's local co-op? That's really can, cool. Uh, That's actually sick. Control partner character with a, a second player. I'd be down for that. And then they can interact with the world and kind of like do all the stuff you can do with player one. That's cool. And then there's some fun shortcuts you can take that way as well. You going for one? Ooh, nice. 49%? What do we think? Nice. I can see all the effort that was put into like the little things, like all the cassette tapes having the little it's stickers good on them. Catch a pom -pom early on, I believe. Can I come to your house and do local co-op? Sure. <laughs> I wonder if we could switch to pom bomb and then show off the um, chemistry system if it has any fire moves. Local co-op would be great. That's if something I had uh, we haven't talked too much about is how the uh, elemental types work. 
Oh, they're gonna talk about the type system. Okay. Um, That's see. dope. Okay, so traffic jam. Traffic, traffic jam. Everyone slows down. Even the animations are really good in this game. Like, oh. <laughs> I wonder yeah, if they're thinking of a. Oh, I, I need. I need to wait for my kids to grow up more <laughs> so I can make them play with me. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. What's up, Xavier? Hope you're doing well, man. Yeah, he's a poison type now. Yeah, basically. Oh, it even changes color. Like, have this kind of chemistry system where there's reactions that can cause status effects, um, rather than like it does like a flat I mean, damage increase and stuff. Because uh, kind of status effects and kind of playing with the state of your monster and your enemy's monsters is kind of central to the kind of uh, strategy of the game. Um, you can do some interesting stuff with it. And I mean, naturally, there are types that are kind of going to be less useful against certain elements and vice versa. Oh, if you knock it um, out, you can so still, still catch it. So it still matters what See elements that? you have. Oop. And successful. Very nice. Luckily, my daughter is four, so she can already figure some games out. I think Traffic Crab is actually I started playing Pokemon Red when I was like game. almost... It was. was so, I, uh, there's a lot of love for Like Traffic three and Crab. a half, <laughs> almost four. So like... Try to give my kid the SP when when they're a little older. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, and, and um, play some I fire red. Out that they all have a uh, a sticker that is kind of uh, associated with the tape in your inventory, which is quite fun. Yeah, it's cool. You get a sticker too when you catch them. Um, someone's asking about difficulty. Um, oh, we're still working on the difficulty the settings. What do you think? Yeah, I mean they're subject to change. Um, we could, so in your in your um, oh here we go settings right now. Um, so there are two different difficulties. Oh sections. shoot! We've got one that controls the AI. We can make it smarter. Literally Skynet. <laughs> dumber, dumber. Then, uh, there's another that adjusts. Boring. Scaling. You can turn level scaling off if you don't like it, but it, the game's <laughs> really designed for somewhere in the middle. Hmm. Um, uh, so asking if, is asking literally if Skynet. We will show up evolution and fusion. Um, I don't think we'll show it up in this stream. Uh, yeah. We'll probably do another sometime. And yeah. Them. If this went well, we'll uh, try and do some more streams in the future to show off other aspects of the game. What's your opinion on the tapes as catching mm -hmm. devices? I think it's really cool. Like, it's it's a really weird thing. But I, I don't know. There's a lot of things about this game that are, like, really weird, but I like it, if that makes sense. Like, not weird in a bad way, just different. And dandelion. Like it's like a breath of fresh air, in a lot of ways. And like the pixel art is freaking is, is amazing. Like this game has has really good freaking pixel art. Like when Actually, I think of like games with really good pixel art, I think of uh, Trails of Sunder, uh, Coromon, Given especially that uh, is Monster quite, like, Sanctuary, focus, Cassette Beasts, uh, Nanokin's got some pretty good pixel art. Like I think of games like that. <laughs> so like th this is definitely up there for me. Yeah, I might have to break, break the wall down first. I like how it just made a wall of Legos. Might have to take out the traffic grab in order to prevent his uh, avatage. Nope, nope, if I ever make a game, game, the difficulties will be normal, hard, really hard. Are you stupid? You will die. Easier, easier, yawn. And is your low IQ this low? <laughs> Love what I've seen so far. So excited. Same, man. Oh. You can't yeah, actually and plus... anything that you're recording. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. So that's quite useful. Yeah, Battering Ram is a pun name. Um, there's a lot of uh, dreadful pun names in the moves. I just tuned in. Uh, is there going to be early I mean, access coming out, or is this a one-off creator? <laughs> no, th we're just reacting to a video right now. See? This is just on YouTube. I think it's uh, maybe relevant that Dandelion is tends to be found... Uh, uh, we don't know anything about. I, I don't think there's going to be an early access or anything like that. It can that. also be used as a kind of a bit of a clue in the game if you find Dandelion. We're just reacting to the well. dev scene, uh, dev uh, stream. It's 45 minutes long, so there's no way like I was going to make a there's a video doing that. Dandelion it being kind of boring. Uh, plant type, it's quite fun. I tried to make it so all plant type monsters are not like 
No, I wish. <laughs> they look cool. I wish. I think typically in games, I mean, if the devs like, are uh, watching, you know, <laughs> call quite, uh, me, message me on Discord. I'll you know, play. Unintimidating. So Will I you be streaming the Indie Direct tomorrow? I thought it's on May 22nd. Or is that a different one? Maybe. Although, Dandelion is just cute. I'm thinking of the Indie Live. Uh, you are locked into a recording um, once you start it. So it can be quite a gamble because you might kind of. Oh, it's a Nintendo situation. one. Oops, something's happening here. Um, you know what? Maybe. We might. Times it at. We're going to try and get a game director for difficulty. What's there you this? go. What? What's this? Yeah, this is a different one you guys are talking about. We're not going to find out. <laughs> we won't be going in there today. Yeah, the yeah. underground. Um, this kind of like uh, wraps up to roughly kind of where we wanted to show. Again, we just wanted to kind of show the opening uh, kind of like first this. 20 minutes or so. Yeah, just the very start of the game, kind of show off the uh, battle system and stuff. Um, but we can take some questions before we uh, wrap up here. Um, someone's asking about sequence breaks. Um, this game is extremely sequence breakable. Um, we're I'm very it big on... Really a sequence. Um, yeah. Because it's so open. Yeah, so um, we haven't talked too much about this, but uh, maybe after this prologue, when you play the game, um, it becomes very broad in terms of where you can go and what you can do. And, like, there's no real intended, like root or kind of order of quests and things that you do uh it's your path and we kind of encourage you to you know like a sequence break or kind of try your own thing oh here we go um we've definitely played and we've definitely done some fun 10 a.m kind of across oh, yeah. the world map and things mm, maybe we'll stream it um <clears throat> anything else uh before we wrap up today This thing's still got eight minutes in it. Oh, they do more stuff. If we wait long enough, it'll probably turn to daytime again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we have actually done kind of a loop around here where we were um, just above the kind of. What platforms will the game be available? We earlier. Okay. I believe Xbox of, uh, One and PS4. Like I don't think it's of, PS5 um, and Xbox Series X. I could be wrong about like, that. Small uh, it will be on off. Xbox Game Pass, will be on Nintendo Switch, start. and will be on Steam. Uh, will we be re releasing the OST? We absolutely will be. Yeah, it's, uh, ten, it's 10 a.m. Joel's for me. Music on the game is uh, super awesome. So There's I might. A ton of tracks. I might. That I might. I'm really excited to stream it. Maybe we'll stream it. And uh, yeah, we will. Yeah, we'll probably stream it. I had a couple of videos planned for tomorrow, but if I'm streaming, I'll I'll do one video and one stream. So I'll just push one quest. of the videos. Yeah, back. I mean, um, again, it's not even, it barely, it's not, there's not like one linear quest through the game. You have, like, your oh, ultimate bootlegs. goal, yeah, those are like the, which yeah, is to try like and find a way out. Kinda, right? But there is no canonical, like, it's just the one set of things you have to be doing. Um, but there are a lot of quests in the game that kind of operate like side quests. Essentially. I don't know if it's going to be kind anything specifically monster taming, but game. we usually just do the indie um, stuff just because... We cover so many question. indie games. Sometimes there might be a monster game in there. If not, it's just kind of just fun just to hang out and do the, the like the big news. It's kind of like I made a video when the Steam Deck got Spring released. Like that's not technically tree. indie or monster Spring game specifically, but um, are kind of found behind walls and obstacles. With the intent is that yeah, they, it's uh, coming to PlayStation, like Xbox, and Switch, and Steam. And monsters in the world often have like different behaviors. Like the Dominoths tend to fly around and not go aggro. Uh, certain monsters have different aggro patterns or different move speeds just to kind of add a bit of character to them in the world instead of having kind of random encounters that happen randomly. <laughs> Kelly doesn't want you to go too far away. Uh, Mattelis is asking how long are the day-night cycles? I think they're about 25 minutes. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think that's about right. But again, you'll you tend to find you tend to skip through them more by um, kind of resting than you would just by waiting them out. Although you can do that. Push that guy off the cliff, please. That should be a feature. You <laughs> push him off the cliff and steal his stickers. Steam Deck is um, where most monster catching is, so it's tangible. Yeah, to, uh, that's what I mean. Like, monsters. Um, I just like. Sometimes, like, I'll cover yes, something that's not in necessarily one, monster taming, but I can't talk it's about that too much right now. But, um, I think you'll be pleased, is the answer. <laughs> what was that question? <laughs> um, 
Yes, in more ways than one. I want to hear this question. Um, someone's asking if they were equivalent to uh, legendary monsters. Oh, okay. Um, yes, in more ways than one. And we can't talk about that too much right now. But um, I think you'll be pleased is the answer. Well, there's that big skeleton guy. So you have to fight. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying this to video be, bar uh, is cryptic. literally don't make a video about the timeline of Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, I don't know what is that. Um, I've never played that game. Isn't that the game where you have to like sneak away from all the? What are those things like? <laughs> I, I, I never. I, I don't know what that is. I've heard of it. Like I know a lot of people got mad at like the game theorists or whatever for covering it. I I don't know anything yeah, these about rocks it. Here are very Unrelated, but what do you do for work? I I can't uh, imagine can't that a channel of this size could be full time. Uh, oh yeah, I have a full time job. I work. Uh, I made a whole video about it. I work like fifty hours a week. I drive a bus as well. Uh, favorite part of working on the game. <clears throat> uh, and I have to commute a like a total of like two and a half to three hours I a think... day. Do you have an answer for that, Tom? What your favorite part of working on the game is? Hmm. Oh, I, I thought you meant I can't have a full-time job with the channel at this size. You meant like I can't be full-time on YouTube. It's, it's yeah. really got me thinking. No, I'm definitely not full-time like on YouTube. Not even close. That's, yeah, that's, I mean, part of working on this project is getting <laughs> to game looks so funny, happy it's going to be on Game Pass. Much, Hells yeah. Uh, I'm my happiest getting to do that. And I I've, um, designing moves. And I wish I could be full-time. Like... I love making videos. Yeah, I'm on vacation actually right now. I, just, I like my vacation the, uh, started yesterday. Pools, um, all tend to like lend themselves to win certain strategies. Like but certain today monsters, would have been my off day anyway. Rather than every monster like this tends Tuesday. to just have atta Tuesday, like, basic attacks and then strong attacks. Um, different monsters have kind of different strategies. Like some are very tactical. Some are much more support. Some are much more focused around kind of defense or like I had sometimes a total they're much more focused around like for six months ago. You know, like, Random, six months, years random ago. chance kind of move. Yeah, and th this is basically going to be um, my so life for the next twenty-five be years. By that type. <laughs> Generally, <laughs> it sucks. I mean, um, you'll be able to see um, each element. How does that make this work? There, the right answer is magic. Menu, both in the uh, party menu. Well, it used to be battle. coffee, but I quit caffeine like three months um, ago, so I don't even drink caffeine anymore. Generally, you should be able to tell what types of monsters are. Um, did this game start development before Lena's Inception came out? Um. It was a slight crossover, I think. Depends on the development. Um, yeah, sure. yeah, we were like, we were still we had like ideas yeah. and prototyping and things like that. Yeah, I want to play their Lena's Inception into full swing game. Until it's not a monster Lena's tamer, out. but I feel like I could get away with playing it. Like the cassette beats devs made this game type video. You know what I mean? Um, planning on mod support. I think that's maybe black a little tea. bit. No, I don't drink tea either. Thing. <laughs> um, Mod support also depends where on kind of how. Once in a while, I'll have like a like a pop that has caffeine in it, technically. But like the, the amount of caffeine compared to what I I used to drink like two Monster Energies and two coffees a day, like sometimes three Monster Energies. Like I I was completely addicted to caffeine to the point where it was like I was like a freaking drug addict with caffeine. Right, I'd get like huge migraines when I didn't have any. But uh, I quit that. Like it's been over three months now, and I haven't had any coffees, any caffeinated tea. Uh, the worst thing I've had is like a diet Pepsi. Like I, I don't rely on caffeine anymore. Whereas I, had, I used to have to have it every single day. It was bad. Received or what kind of community? Uh, What's the release date tomorrow? I wish. It once as well. Um, yeah, it's nuts. Did did you have to you... drive that commute or did you take the train? Because like I, I feel like like I have to drive and then work and then drive. Like I wouldn't mind as much if my commute was on the train or something. Because then at least I could like write YouTube videos or something. But I, I, I basically like I'm driving the whole time, so I have to be alert. So I drive an hour and a half to work. Then I, then I do my, uh, my you know nine to ten hour shift depending on the day. And then I have to drive an hour and a half, sometimes two hours home if there's traffic. Does it get more intense in deeper areas? <laughs> it's definitely yeah. Uh, X caffeine act. No, I'm not addicted to caffeine game, anymore. I was though. I think is. Very fair to say. Now I just have a lot of carbonated um, water, yeah, which uh, is a well, much yeah, better with, addiction uh, to train have. Battles, <laughs> yes. Um, so people, so you do have people who are kind of oh, hostile, okay, okay, yeah. So I, the other half, I guess, is better, but yeah, the first half the definitely sucks. Tend to be a bit more tactical. 
and a bit more based around them having multiple uh, tapes. Um, this being because I used to commute to uh, I used to commute to to college uh, about an hour and a bit each way, not because it was far, but just because like getting through the city sucked, and I took transit for that. And that wasn't too bad because like we'd take a nap or we'd like like play video games or whatever. But but yeah, like going to work, it, I, I I don't know. I just found that going to work like sucks a lot more because I'm driving the whole way. And then like I like school more than my job, <laughs> so like going to work, you're just like, oh, I have to go to work. In the starting area, you don't. There's no there's no fights like that because they're a bit more challenging. But um. They do exist. Oh, all, yeah. Like, well, I was mostly of, like, addicted to Monster Energy drinks, but yeah, I drank coffee too uh, a lot. That represents that, yeah. I used to get, uh, what did I get in my coffee? Two milk, two sweetener. Yeah, I think uh, to follow up on the mod question, I think it depends on what people want, really, and uh, if there's a big enough demand. How does that work? If you drive one way, you just go at the train. No, no, no. I think, I, I think what he means, um, Smooth, is he would have to drive to the train station, then take the train. Right, so let's say the commute's four hours. You drive an hour to get to the train station, then you hop on the train, then an hour to school, and then you'd hop on the train back and then go get your car at the train station, and then so I think that's what he meant. Like half of his half half of one way is car, and then half of going back is car, which still sucks. That's two hours of driving on Ooh, top of all your crap. Do you think like, that we sucks. Wrap up there? <laughs> that definitely sucks. Yeah. You recently hit 35k Ooh, yeah. or 34k. Right when do you um, think you'll hit 35? I have no idea. Yeah, thanks very much for <laughs> tuning in. I, I appreciate um, the support, though. It's been fun. Yeah. Um, it's hopefully, been great. you know, uh, development's going well, and we're kind of happy to be able to kind of show off a bit more of the game, even if it was just a small snippet, um, and kind of answer some questions and kind of show people that the game is like looking really cool. And I'm really happy well, with how and, this game uh, looks. What we're thinking with it, you know, like the kind of goals we have to achieve. Um, We'll be uploading this online. Uh, so you can I need to make sure I can get a review one. copy of this game so and, I can yeah, put out a bunch we'll of content for you these, guys on day one. Like the parts of the game. One. And yeah, stick around uh, the Discord and you'll get like late, latest information on uh, future streams. Um, have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, so... so um, obviously like if you want to stay up to date on cassette b stuff like this is a high priority game for me so obviously like if you're not subscribed already i'm sure most of you are but definitely do because i'm always putting out videos on uh, cassette beast but uh, uh raffle you mentioned 35k so i originally when 2022 started i was like i think i was at like 23 and i was like you know what would be nice if i could get to 35 by the end of the year okay <laughs> we're almost we're like we're at 34 already and it's only may so we, we've definitely had like a ton of like success on the channel this year in terms of growth. And like, it, it, it's awesome. Like, I'm glad more people are getting into the genre too. Like, I, I'm, I've always been someone who's like, whether you like Pokemon, whether you hate Pokemon, like monster taming games will always have something for you. And like, there's a lot of people who play Pokemon fan games and Pokemon ROM hacks. And like, they should also check out these monster taming games. Cause I feel like that's, it's sort of like the same type of community, right? So that's why I've been playing more, doing a little more Pokemon stuff too, because I'm I'm actually excited for Gen Nine. No, no, I'm cautious, but I'm more excited than I was for let's say Gen Eight. So I'm I'm in the camp right now where I'm like, yeah, I just want more Pokemon fans to check out some Monster Taming games. <laughs> like let, grow the let's grow the genre, let's grow the channel, let's uh you know Gremlins Tale just got funded, which is definitely awesome. Like I love to see when uh, games in our genre get funded. And yeah, like, like I'm just trying to spread the love with all these devs because there's so many people like working so hard on these games. Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of it did. Like, I, I think I gained like 4,000 subs last month, which to be honest, I had almost a million views and I gained almost the same amount of subs when Nexomon came out, but I had half. So I think I had a lot of the Coromon community already watching my channel before Coromon came out. So, like, because, like, yeah, when Nexomon came out, I gained, like, 3,200 subs in a month. And I gained, uh, and I had, like, 450, it's on my social blade anyway. But, yeah, th this month I had, like, 930,000 views. It was, like, holy crap, because I was uploading, like, three days a week, uh, three times a day. And I gained only, like, 600 more than when Nexomon came out. So, I think what it was is because I've been making Coromon content for, like, two years. A lot of Coromon fans were already subbed to my channel. So I was just getting like the new Coromon fans who who played because the game released. But um, yeah, no, Coromon is awesome. Like I was so excited for Coromon and 
like I'm still trying to think of like different types of content I can make for the game. I'm mostly just waiting for like post game stuff at this point because I've made so many types of videos. But um, yeah, like, like like honestly, it's it's been great. Like I think cassette beasts. Like I'm not sure how big it's gonna be, but like I will try to make it big if I can, <laughs> depending on how big I am when it comes out because it's looking really sick. Once we get a few 3D games, it'll jump a lot. Casual audience love 3D games more. The thing about 3D games is like it's a lot harder in my opinion to make a 3D game look good because you you're always compared to like the latest generation of of whatever whereas with pixel art like you can make games that look just as good as pixel other pixel art games that were made by AAA studios back in the day so like you're always going to get the people that are like oh well the textures aren't that great or this or that right so like yeah like i feel like it's it's a double edged sword with that and then 3D takes a lot more money. You hear about studios running out of money. So like I'm a little, I, I've been a little more like uh, cautious when it comes to certain types of 3D games, just because it's like, it, it's hard to expect a lot when it's super expensive just to get the models rigged. I'm curious since my mom runs a YouTube channel, if you don't mind me asking, what's your thousand dollar ad views like? Oh, it's like a dollar or two. <laughs> like if I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> especially because like i don't a lot of youtube creators will pump their videos up to like to um a lot of youtube <laughs> a lot of youtube creators will pump their videos to be um what do you call it like um eight minutes or whatever like if you look at mine like i did like well this one was two but like i literally just like i i almost never have like eight minutes in one second Right, like the seven twenty seven. Like I might have been able to push that that Pokemon video to eight, but like I don't I don't do that because I feel like it's lame. Right, like if my videos are over eight minutes, they're usually well over eight minutes, or they're like you know an hour long because it's like a let's play or something. We're going to three D game. Hopefully, it'll be up to standards. Yeah, I mean I like low poly three D games too. Like like I've seen those three D games that are very low poly. Like I I personally think those look sick. Um, a lot of people might not agree with me. But I think they look sick. So. <laughs> also, hope you can get a re yeah. I I'm I'm trying to get a review copy of Digimon Survive as well. But yeah, uh, again, thanks guys so much for watching. Um. Uh, you're right. Makes sense, especially because you won't even make that much. I I don't even know how it works to be honest. I'd rather just come out with good videos, <coughs> or at least the best I can do. Like I'm not saying I'm the best freaking creator in the world. Like there's creators that make way more. Um, like like crazy videos than I possibly could, but I upload every day. So that's kind of my exchange for that. <laughs> uh, I've never played Astroneer. That sounds interesting though. I like low poly. Like I think low poly looks cool. I still think super Mario 64 looks awesome or like one 3d art style. I wish more games would go with is like wind waker. Go play wind waker on GameCube. It still looks fucking phenomenal. And it was made in like what? 2003. And it still looks amazing. I like that art style. Like, not trying to be realistic. Like, there's nothing wrong with being, like, cartoony. You know what I mean? You might have seen my fan sculpts before. I did a back he sculpt. Oh, okay. No, I, I don't. I might have. I'd have to see. I'd have to recall. I'd have to see it and then, and then be like, oh, yeah, I saw that. Or, oh, no, I didn't type thing. But, uh, yeah. I'd very recommend. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll check it out at some point if I have time. I've just I've been so busy. I'm trying to like also uh take a little take it a little easy during my vacation. I'm playing Elden Ring right now, but I've been having trouble even keeping up with that. So um yeah, I've just been kind of chilling. But yeah, guys, uh, I'm I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, again, the cassette beast stuff is linked below if you want to check it out for yourselves. Um and yeah, <laughs> appreciate everybody coming out. This is a lot of fun. Uh, great turnout. I wasn't expecting this many people to come out and just hear me talk. So that's that. That's always great. Um, it's when people try to make 3D realism that is super not. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't want to go too realistic because like you're probably not going to have the budget to do it. And like I love pixel art. I have no problem with it. 3D games can look good, but like it, it's hard. Like like and I don't blame the devs. Like it's just hard, right? And some people are a little too are a little too um what's the word they're a little too harsh on an indie studio like oh well you know the game should look like this or the game should look like that when it's being worked on like by like two people and it's like bro like chill <laughs> but anyways yeah i'll catch you guys later stylized is sexy oni boy anyways uh guys 
All right, peace out. You guys are sexy. Uh, subscribe. Check out my Discord, all that stuff. Patreon, Twitter, if you want. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.